and look at that how there are options that you didn't know existed before yeah this is such a great example of you know when we are in a state of worry or any kind of negative state how Mm -hmm. things exist beyond what we can see from where we are Welcome back, everyone, to Live Support with Odile for Changing Negative Implicit Childhood Memories Using the Remit Method. We've created this forum for those who have read our book or watched our YouTube videos and need some personal help with changing negative childhood memories, but aren't able to do one-to-one sessions. So if you are new to the Remit Method, be sure to check the links in the description of this video for all the details on that. And also, if you would like to be a part of this free platform for getting help from me, check the link in the description for the details on that as well. Mm. Hey, sweetie, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. You look nice and pink. (laughs) You look very nice. Um, So basically, I had a good thing happen this morning. We have like academic advisors at uni, so like they advise us on the academic side. And then he, this man was such a vibe. Like this is the first time I met him. And he was like, so I said about, I wanted to go to Australia next year for a month to work in a hospital there. And he was like, oh, I have contacts all over the world. Like I'll get you sorted. And I was like, yes. I was like, woo, I was so happy. Yeah. Like Good people job. <laughs> and look at that how there are options that you didn't know existed before yeah yeah that's why I was like oh okay and he yeah. was so nice he was like I have other opportunities for you da, 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 because I have issues with networking like I don't I haven't met anyone who I can just reach out to whether when I want to do anything um right. like if I want some sort of experience I'm like who do I go to and he was like don't worry I have like connections all over I was like, yeah that's perfect this is such a great example of you know when we are in a state of worry or any kind of negative state how Mm -hmm. things exist beyond what we can see from where we are very good swasti i'm so proud of you for being open to to finding those things thank you thank you so the question i have today is basically at university we have like almost like this course is very clicky but i don't know if that's a common phrase click yeah I think yeah, yeah. sorry I, think so. <laughs> I only yeah. discovered it like a month ago so basically group there are like groups of people and there is a certain group of people who have it all together so they have everything and it seems like their lives are perfect they're like very empowered people and mm-hmm. obviously I, I look up mm-hmm. to them but also like I know that the fact that I'm attracted to them means that I have that in me anyway so I'm not like I'm not lacking anything but those yeah. are the kind of people who I kind of envy so so much because they all have like this group they live in this house together it's almost like a family that they built themselves in like a city outside of their own and the thing is all of this group has like they're all like couples together so it's like couple couples and then that forms the group and every time I meet them I just feel like so much envy like I am broken and I I don't have that in me (laughs) yeah um Mm. even though I know I do like I just feel like it's a mission that I would never get to not to belong in the group but to be like that right yeah yeah so that's that's what the triggers have been constantly this week all right very good good job and well done for bringing it here so my first question for you is what do you think it would take for you to be like them what do you think is missing I want to say the ability to stay consistently calm all the time okay yeah do you have any idea of why you're not like that? So in other words, what's stopping you from being consistently calm all the time? Yeah, this is where I was confused. I don't know what I was trying to get at here. So my theory is that if I was like them, I would be with them. So why am I not with them? Surely that's saying that I am missing something. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's answer the logic of that first. For those who are new, I like to answer the logic first first to get the conscious mind on board so that the conscious mind allows the rest, allows the unconscious part of the brain to change. So do you think that everyone in the world who is consistently calm and like them is with them? No. 
<laughs> right. So, I mean, that answers that, right? Mm. The fact that you aren't with them doesn't mean you can't be like that because there's plenty of people in the world like that who aren't with them. Yes, oh, that's true. <laughs> right. Yeah. So that, yeah. hopefully that helps bring the logic into mm. it and bring the conscious mind on board. Yes. Okay, very good. So rather than looking at them and thinking, I wish I was with them, I wish I could be with them, and the fact that I'm not with them means I'm not, and so on, you could just form your own group, right? Yeah, I think this is the issue. I do, this is the paradox here. I don't like groups of people, but then I think, no, but the thing is, the friends I have, they don't like groups of people either. But it's interesting because we're all craving that group. But the thing is, we could get into a group together. And that's, that's what the, that's what, that's what I realized like a couple of days ago. I was like, oh, isn't this cool? Right. And the reason it's like that, the reason it doesn't make sense, the reason it's yeah. illogical, because of course, it's not about the group thing. It's yeah. not about that. Mm. So let's find out, first of all, what's wrong with groups? So you say you don't like groups of people. What's wrong with them? I feel like I, I never feel hard. It's like no one gives me that attention that I need and just like a pair. Yeah. 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 So when you're in a group, you feel that there's just too much going on and you, are, you don't have a voice. Yeah. Like I'm not shining in that group. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Very good. And now to drill a little deeper to, to these, to find these references, let's say you're in a group and it's all, everybody's very quiet. It's a mm -hmm. quiet group. What would that be like? I like that. <laughs> okay. It's nice. Yeah. All right. So, because we want to find out exactly which pieces here, because of course there are quiet groups. Mm -hmm. There are groups of people who are very calm and there are people who are boisterous. Mm -hmm. So when you think of a group, are you thinking of a bubbly, boisterous kind of group? I think, no, I, my mind goes to belonging to a group. That's where my mind goes. My mind doesn't go to whether they're loud or quiet or whatever. It's just okay. like, I don't belong. Interesting. Um, and I wish to belong, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Very good. And if you did belong, if you knew for without doubt that you belonged to a group, how would that feel? Well, it feels uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. <that's what> <laughs> <I was wondering. laughs> yeah. So the logic, your logical mind is saying it's because I don't belong to a group, but that's not the reference okay does that make I, sense no but yes yeah it's just illogical <laughs> that's all yeah yeah because because if you did belong to a group you'd feel uncomfortable anyway okay. so you've got that same kind of clash or, or contradiction going on that yeah. you had with something previously and I think it was not wanting to be alone oh but yeah also not wanting to be with people yes right yeah. so mm -hmm. so that's a similar thing going on there so let's find out where that's coming from first of all when you were a child I know you were alone a lot I know you had one friend at a time kind of thing when you were a child um mm -hmm. any experiences with groups then when you were when you were little yeah so I had one memory come up and I did change it so maybe I'm missing something so I'll just say it now I had this, we used to take like a school bus and the driver, driver's daughter was used to be on the same bus and I thought she was really cool. So one time I tried to talk to her and uh, she didn't say anything back or whatever happened because she had like a group of people. And now I uh, address that so I have a stepping stone of where I literally sit on the bus and she is coming to me. And then the final thing is we are like talking. So I belong to that group and they look forward to me like being there, like I'm shining, like the thing I said I want to be. So that's what I have now. All right. Very good. And so that's great as a final memory. I think the stepping stones that, that are missing in the first instance, that everything happened the way it happened. So you get on the bus, she's popular and all of the, or whatever it is, and you speak to her and she doesn't speak back to you or whatever that, whatever actually happened there. And you speak again and okay. then she pays attention because okay. that's a missing piece there where you're okay. not heard so just uh, say again what what you get that yeah 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 so I'm not heard because so when I spoke that she didn't reply yeah exactly yeah so that piece we you you need that piece of her reply okay 
And not only that, in the first instance, you need the piece of you making her reply mm. so that you have control. You're not at the mercy of whether this person's going to reply or not and hoping that they'll reply. Okay. Okay, Does and this bus sense? in general was very much like buzz, 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 and then just me. Like, me uh -huh. to myself. And as a child, you love being alone. Like, a child, like as in kids just are fine. They don't have a meaning to being alone. But I did. I was like, I'm sitting here alone and everyone's talking. And, like, it's just, like, so much chatter on this bus to school. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, they were all older. Like, no one was in my class. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't even okay. connect with anyone. Yeah. So there's a few different pieces, pieces here. And what would it have been like if you were one of the chatterers? You were one of the people chat, 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 chat with your friends. It's good because those people know that they're like, they have the attention and they know it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that's what we're aiming for is that that's mm. what, you, so it's not just one person who comes and talks to you. You oh, are yeah. one of those people who's chattering and with all your friends, exactly what you perceived them to be. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's the end result yeah. we're aiming for, but the, there's important stepping stones to put in there before we get to that. So can you create the scene? So you, you're getting on the bus and there's that girl, bus driver's daughter, and you go to speak to her. And what happens, first of all, originally? It was like she was one of the popular pretty girls, you know, like who ignore whoever comes, in, whoever comes to speak to them. And right. she was only popular because she was the driver's daughter. So that's like mm -hmm. a big thing. So, so yeah, that, that I was ignored because I was not okay. Funny. I was not that's cool. It. Yeah. So let's do the first stepping stone. You go to speak to her. She ignores you and you say, hey, excuse me. And she turns, she goes, oh, sorry. Can you imagine that? Okay. Um, she's, a bit, she's a bit bitchy. <laughs> okay. Because what we yeah. want to create here is that it's not that she was ignoring you. It's that she didn't hear you because the chat uh, is so loud. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's what we're going for. Okay, yeah, now I can see her. Yeah. Good job. And how does that feel? Yeah, that feels fine. Yeah. So we want a very specific feeling here that we're going for. And so uh, I want to yeah. home in so that we may um so that we're sure we get that. And the feeling is she literally just didn't hear her and you realize that. Oh, okay. Wait, okay. Okay, yeah, now I can see that. You got yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Good. And how does that feel first? Okay, that feels better. Good. Yeah, that's what we're going for. So you want to practice that little stepping stone. And then the next one will be you get on the bus and when you speak to her, she immediately responds. She does hear you and she immediately responds the way you were hoping she would. So I speak to her and she responds. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. That feels good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Very, very good. Mm. So that's another important. So those two are very important. Practice each one, of course, until it's established. Yeah. Then the next one is as you get on the bus, she sees you and her face lights up and mm. she calls you over. Yeah. Okay. But then my mind goes to if I sit in that group of people, I would have nothing to say. Interesting. How do you know you wouldn't have anything to say? So they were like very old and I mm -hmm. was very like we were not in the same class. This is the mm -hmm. only time we saw each other. I, oh. I feel like I have nothing to input mm -hmm. into their conversation. Okay. And and if you did, so let's say you do have plenty to input, they're waiting to hear from you all kinds of things, how your previous day was, and let's oh, yeah. say you could wave a magic wand mm -hmm. and you could have any kind of life, any kind of experiences. What would be the ideal that you get on that bus and they're waiting to hear how something went? So you went to a concert of a famous person or you met a celebrity or you've got horses mm -hmm. or you went to a fun fair or you went on holiday somewhere you've got okay. pets of some kind and they're waiting to hear all about it you got something yeah yeah good. yeah that would be good 
okay yeah i didn't i thought that i had to almost like talk about what they talk about but that's not true exactly yeah yeah. (laughs) exactly and that is what your brain is referencing now oh yeah so as you think about a group your brain is going but how much i don't know your your brain is trying to make you fit in with whatever group that there is yeah and that's not necessary yeah okay i see it now Mm. Good. Yay. So, so what you're doing is rather than coming to a group to get something or to fit in, you are bringing your own. Yeah. Bring your own. Yeah. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. so then what people are drawn to in your, both your childhood memories and now as an adult will be you and your, just who you are. Just who, what you bring. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. 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 They're not looking for you to fit in with them. They're looking for what you're bringing that's different, that's novel, that's you. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, I have this friend who's like, she just sits there and everyone wants to talk to her about her own things. I never have that. It's like people start talking at me about their things. Like, you never ask me what was happening with me. (laughs) Or maybe I'm not recognizing it when it does happen. Absolutely. So your brain will be filtering out and you'll be drawn to the people who are just going to talk at you because Mm. your brain is going, I don't know what to say. So let them talk. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yeah. True. True. Okay. So, and, and so that's everything in your demeanor is Mm. going to be broadcasting what you're bringing. Okay whether that is I'm shining and I've, I'm happy inside myself and everybody is drawn to me because they want to know, they want more, they want to experience what I have or I'm, I hope they like me. I don't know what to say. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a way to fit in. Mm. Okay. And that's just desperation. That doesn't give off the vibe you want. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. And so that desperation will attract certain people yeah that will fit in with that and it will repel others yeah yeah okay make sense yeah that makes sense yes good so what we want to do is give that little you the most interesting fascinating life Mm -hmm. okay so you have pets you have you you go on holiday you have all kinds of stuff going on in your life and at home And whenever you get on the bus or you turn up at school or you walk into a room, everybody wants to know how you're doing and what's happening now. This is hitting in the right spot because this friend who I said, she always has that. And this this makes so much sense now. She always has everything, like exactly the same thing. She has um, something going on at home, a holiday, a concert, da, 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 da. And I'm like, wow, you're so interesting. There is stuff going on. Yeah, that makes sense. And and the thing is, you will have stuff going on as well. It's just that your brain yeah, is seeing it in that way. Yeah. yeah. Your brain is not seeing it as something interesting to share okay. because of that conditioning. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. How does that sound? That sounds really, really good. That sounds exciting. Yay! Very good. So let's just check the bus now. So you get on the bus and that girl's face lights up, but so does everybody else. They all want, they go, oh, Swasti, come, come sit with me, sit with me. Okay. And they start chatting. And so the chatter, all of that chatter that was so loud for you on the bus, that is now, you are the center of it. Yeah. And how does that feel? that feels good that feels like a celebrity walking in yeah yeah very good good job sweetheart excellent now let's check in when you think of a group how do you feel i feel good because i'll bring my own like you said it's it's, yeah exactly it will be about me rather than them exactly okay fantastic yay (laughs) so how do you feel now yeah it feels really good Good. yay good job sweetheart and thank you so much for bringing that here because Mm -hmm. i know that will help others as well yes excellent you're very very welcome i'm so proud of you very good
You have a question, Donna? Hi, Donna. I do. Um, Swasti, thank you for that because I've I've struggled with that at times too, where I don't feel I have anything to bring. And oh. I do look at other people and and for whatever reason think they're more amazing, better, whatever. And I could I just don't measure up. So yeah, definitely. Thank you. Yes. I've not really addressed this directly. And it's really, it can, I suppose it could be general and I don't know, I'm just going to ask. With the way things have been in the world the last few years, I don't seem to be able to feel safe at all. And I know that I, my entire childhood was unsafe and, and I, I get that, but where do you go for a reference when everything is going wrong? Like what's going on right now? I live in Canada. Oh my gosh, this, that, you know, that kind of thing. What's going on in Israel? You know, what is going to happen? Are we going to have a World War III? We just got over this horrible pandemic and all of the restrictions. Now our freedoms are being taken away. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. And it's just, it's just one thing after the other. I've had to shut off all my news feeds. Mm -hmm. All of them. I will go and look when I want to look. I don't want to, that stuff flashed in my face anymore because it triggers me. It literally mm -hmm. triggers me. And yeah. I can't seem to settle my nervous system down. All right. Very good. So thank you so much for bringing this, Donna, because you're not alone. This is going to be affecting a lot of people. And you're right to switch it all off for the moment. So in other words, you're absolutely right to be protecting yourself from, you know, the newsfeed and everything for the moment. So that's a good temporary measure where you want to end up. So what you're aiming at, the goal you're aiming at is that it doesn't matter. In other words, there's news, there's no news. You're not triggered by it. So I like to answer the logic first, which, and the logic of it is, so there's a couple of pieces actually in the first instance where you are right now, where you're living and your surroundings and everything, are you physically safe? Yes. Okay. So there's no imminent threat? No. Okay. Very good. Obviously, for those watching, anybody watching the recording and so on, obviously, if you are in a physically dangerous situation, the number one priority is to get yourself physically safe. So that that's a given. Now, beyond that, if one can do something about what's going on in the world or wherever you are, fantastic, do that. So if there's actions you can take or you know, volunteering or any kind of contributions, that kind of thing, that's great. Then you can do something and, you know, obviously make sure you're in a calm strategic state for making those decisions and taking those actions. Not that it, not that you're triggered. If you can't do anything about something, so like the, you know, there's a lot of world events that are beyond our control, mm -hmm. then you want to recognize, okay, there's nothing I can do about that. So sitting, looking at it is not going to do anything. It's not going to contribute. It's not going to save the people. It's not going to make any difference. But what it is doing in the meantime is keeping me filled with stress chemicals and yes. affecting and impacting my life, right? Now, What's very important while we're answering the logic here, what's very, very important to keep bearing in mind, keep reminding yourself of, is that it is perfectly natural to be doing it. The reason we do that is because the brain is fixated with what it sees as danger. So even though, for example, what's going on in Israel is on the other side of the world for us, to the brain, it's right here. And it's happening right now in our space and we're going to die. So that's why, because there's no spatial understanding, there's no time, there's no re difference between reality and imagination, all of that. So the unconscious part of your brain, as you think about what's happening there, or you hear the news or whatever it is, the unconscious part of your brain is going, I'm in danger right this minute. I'm in the middle of it right now and I have to I have to do something. And so it's pumping those stress chemicals into your system. Now the conscious mind gets on board because the conscious mind goes, I know that it's in Israel. I know it's not here. So therefore there must be a real reason for this danger. No. Oh. Does that make sense? So the conscious mind's job is to find reasons for what you're feeling. So the fear 
is coming from the, the unconscious part of the brain not knowing that it's not real. It's like when you watch a movie, when you watch a scary movie, the unconscious part of your brain, it thinks you're in danger right now, thinks that what you're watching is real and you're in the middle of it. But the difference there is that your conscious mind is going, it's just a movie. I know it's just a movie here. I'm sitting in the, in the movie theater or in front of the TV. But with these kinds of things, with the world events and anything else, the conscious mind is going, oh, yeah, because if that happens, then that and then and then. And it keeps coming up with all these extra reasons and justifications for the fear. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. So, but it also you just reminded me too of the fact that the, the subconscious, you know, it doesn't know the time. It doesn't know the place. It doesn't know anything at all. And I'd forgotten about that. Yeah. Yeah. So to, and it helps to, to keep reminding yourself of that and going, it's okay. So it's like having a little child who's terrified of the dark or thinks there's monsters under the bed. And then you want to reassure that child. And go, I call it the okay. little liar. Oh, okay. <laughs> I call it the little liar because that's exactly what it's been. Well, and I would change the word liar. Okay. Because saying the little liar is judgmental of no, the child. That's and the true. child is not deliberately lying. She's genuinely terrified. Oh, that's coming from another reference. Got it. Okay. Fair enough. Yeah. 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 So so it's it's the little one who's just terrified of the dark. Bless her heart. And she's genuinely ter terrified. Yeah. So uh, because to lie, you have to know that you're not telling the truth. That's right. And, and the brain Otherwise, doesn't know that it's not telling the truth, just like the little girl didn't know. Exactly. Spot on. So what you want to do then is reassure the child. It's OK, sweetie. You're not. You're, everything's OK. There's look, there's no monsters. Let's look under the bed. There's nothing there. You're safe. That kind of thing, that's a way to speak to yourself. So using the logic, you're not in danger. And what you're feeling when you, so as you think about those world events and all the different things that you're worried about, pulling back a little bit into observer mode and reminding yourself, oh yeah, what I'm feeling, this fear, this worry, and all of that is just chemicals. And it's only because the unconscious part of my brain thinks I'm in the middle of all of that right now, but I'm not. And so what I'm feeling is like what I feel when I watch a scary movie. Because when you watch a scary movie, you still feel the fear. It's, it's yeah. very real, but you're not in actual danger. So keep reminding yourself of that. And then recognize that the conscious mind is going to try and find reasons. And we will come up with plenty of reasons for why we're all in danger and all of that. However, if you look at your life right now, there are more things good than there are bad if you were to really look at it and so you know you're you're not in a war zone this right now mm -hmm. you have shelter you have food you have electricity you have the internet you have mm -hmm. certain people but the thing is that the brain will fixate on the <laughs> one dangerous thing and ignore all the good things because that's survival because it doesn't matter how beautiful your cave is with all your things and you've got food and you've got your family, if there's a tiger outside, right? It, it's the tiger you need to pay attention to, to survive. Got so it. that's what's going on there. Uh, so that's as far as the logic side goes. Now let's look at the references. Okay, so first of all, as you think of all the world events that you're thinking of, the things in the news and all the things going on, if you were to drill down to the, the foundation feeling there, what is it? What would that be? Suffering. Suffering? Mm-hmm. Okay. And so mm -hmm. other people suffering or your suffering? Suffering, torture, like pain. Physical and emotional pain. Okay. So if we were taking all of that as a thing, let's put it in a box. Okay. So all the suffering, all the pain, all of that, we're putting it in a, in a, in a wooden box with a lock for the moment. Okay. And so we're not going to think about the details. We're just putting it in a box. And now I want to ask you, what does all of that mean to you that this exists? So there's suffering, there's all of that that's in the box. And what does it mean? It really holds me back from doing things. Mm hmm. Okay. It 
it stifles. I don't know how, but it somehow stifles who I am. Yeah. Okay. And so if you were to think of like just letting it go and getting on with your life, in what way is it stopping you? Where does your brain go? I can't do that. Good job. Okay. And what stops you from doing that? So as you're about to do that, what happens exactly? I started looking around like, where's the danger? Where's the danger? Yeah. I can't stop looking because if I don't yeah. look, it's going to get me. There you go. That's spot on. So do you see how that's happening, even though you're not actually in danger? Yes. So, and that's because it's not the adult you that's doing that. It's the child. The child is still, like you said, your childhood was so unsafe. The child in you is still hypervigilant because if not, she's in danger. Yeah. So as you, I know you've changed a lot of your childhood already. Is there mm -hmm. anything still left that comes, that pops into your mind that feels like that? Like you have to be vigilant or there's danger. Any sort of chaos, any sort of chaos. Mm -hmm. chaos usually came with drinking okay but it got frantic and, and very frightening when there was more people in the house right okay so it, it's very early reference though so all i'm seeing is is a lot of people and feeling a lot of chaotic energy and anxiety and and things like that Yes, very good. Good job, Donna. So let's grab that scene, um, however it's represented, yeah. you know, whatever's there. And I want you to see if you can imagine a someone like, and it can be anybody, it can be a celebrity, it can be a fictional character, it can be a real person, you know, someone who you feel has a presence of control and influence and who feels good you know would feel good to have them there oh i don't know if it's a good idea <laughs> the first one that came to mind was machete oh i don't know that i don't know machete. He's, he was a man who grew up in circumstances similar to mine who ended okay. up in terrible jails and and everything like that and pulled himself out of it and became one of hollywood's most respected actors um, he okay. was killed and maimed so many times it was ridiculous, but he looks like a big, mean, hor he, like this, like he said himself, I was the biggest, meanest Mexican around. Okay. All right. And so uh, let's just double check. So if this was real and you could, as a little child, you could have him on your side, <laughs> that scene, how would that feel? Amazing. Yeah. I wouldn't we'll fear anything. I wouldn't then fear we'll anything. Them. Perfect. So I want you to see if you can give that little you the gift of machete. <laughs> yes. You can? Good job. I can. Good. And so I from can. now on, he's with that little you all the time. He's like your bodyguard and he, he, he's your spokesperson. So if there's any nonsense, he speaks up. And can that little you feel safe with him, with her? Good. It, it serves a double purpose too, interestingly enough, because I never knew a father. Ah, okay. So it, it, it also interestingly kind of fills that void too. Good, very good. So, so that's good as a temporary thing for a father. We, we do want your father in as well. So, but we start with the machete, okay? So he's with you all the time and you are always safe. So now let's go to that chaotic scene. Okay. So there's alcohol involved, there's chaos, there's a lot of people. What will machete do to change that? Out. Good. And they good. will good. go, good. and they will good. go and everyone will leave and take their alcohol with them. And my mother won't drink. And maybe she'll come tuck me in. Very, very good. So that's the first stepping stone there, is that machete makes them all leave, take this yeah. with them. Okay. Done. Now the Done. second, <laughs> good. The second stepping stone I want to put in here is that machete is there all the time anyway, but you also have a magic wand. 
and there's all this chaos, people, alcohol, and you wave your magic wand and all of the people disappear and your mum is left there and you wave your magic wand again and the curse that she was under, which is drinking, lifts. And it was a spell. It wasn't really her. And she, and that's that spell, that curse lifts and she's, oh, thank you so much, sweetheart, for freeing me. And she hugs you. How would that feel? I really hadn't um, been able to have, have a positive thought about my mother alive. Yeah. I had to go around it to work on yeah. her. Right. And, um, this is actually the first time I've ever thought about something like that with her alive. Yes. Okay. Very good. <laughs> and how does it feel as you think of that? Deep. Deep. Yes. Emotional. Um, I'm going to work with this one for sure. Good, good job. Um, yes. Magic wand, huh? <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> it's very, very handy. <laughs> okay. That's it. Because the thing to bear in mind, you know this pretty much, but I, I want to just let everybody yes. else know as well, yes, especially the yes. new ones, is that using something like a magic wand is very powerful because the unconscious part of the brain doesn't know that it's not possible. That's true. So the unconscious part of the brain, as you pretend you're using that magic wand in this memory, the unconscious part of your brain will absolutely believe it. Just like when you watch Harry Potter, the unconscious part of your brain believes what you're watching. And so you get the feelings with it. And this is the same. So even though your conscious mind knows what really happened with your mother and what she was really like and all of that, you can allow the unconscious part of your brain to pretend and believe that she was under a curse and that you had the power to lift that curse. And so there's a few different things going on here, including giving that, empowering that little you. You have no idea. My mother fancied herself a witch. Okay. This, it's, it's just uncanny, I'm sorry all this that's okay it's just that's a just bit okay. uncanny yep it's interesting <laughs> so so you've got a few more pieces a few more pieces of data to work with then right you can just add to it it's 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 very interesting how this might like just totally weave in yes and and it's, it's already working on my subconscious mind good 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 and Thank of course, you. the reason we you're very welcome. And again, well, for those new people, the reason we're doing this is not for the other person's sake. It's for you. And it's changing. All it's doing is changing the way neurons are connecting in your brain and the chemistry that's in your own brain and body. Very good, Donna. So how do you feel now about that? Deeply moved and very calm. Very calm. Oh. very calm. Very calm. Very calm. It just, it just seems to be welling out like a like a drop of water oh and very very calm i think there's going to be some some more domino effects in this and that's what absolutely. it feels like absolutely and now let's just check in with the little you how is she feeling she's happy she's happy yes. that she she can see this she can see that something's happening something's moving it's unusual for her yes. to feel this relieved. Good. Thank there you. you go. You're very welcome. And so what I want to go back to very briefly is, so does she feel safe is, is what I want to. Yes, to she's hand, holding Machete's hand on one side and mom's on the other. There you go. That is perfect. Well done. So now. Moving forward, you want to practice all of this, of course, and yeah. establish it and feel the feelings, the good feelings and that. As for the world events, we want to keep them in that box for the moment. Okay, so there's no need, there's nothing to be done about those world events right now. No. So let your brain know whenever it comes to mind, go, it's okay, they're all in the box, and I will deal with them at some point. But right now, there's nothing to be done. And all I'm going to do is focus on this. All right. And then when you feel ready, you will be able to come back to this recording. Hi, Donna. <laughs> Watching the recording. 
seems to be you that's watching the recording now. So you come yes. back to this recording and then you think about the box. Okay, so when you come back to this recording, you've yeah. already established all the new references. So you've established yes. the machete and your mum and all of that. Then you want to think about the box and notice how you feel. Do I feel, if I think about the box with all the world events in it and all of that stuff, how do I feel? Do I feel any negative things, any fear, any worry? And if so, leave it in the box and keep moving forward with all the new references. When you get to the point where you think, oh, I don't feel anything about what's in the box, it's okay. I know yeah. it's no danger. I feel safe. I feel okay. Then you can think about, okay, so if I were to open that box and look in it, how would I feel? But you're not going to open it. You're just going to imagine if I were to open it, how would I feel? So you keep doing that until you feel like, yeah, it really, it's nothing to do with me. It's not, it doesn't worry me at all. It doesn't bother me at all. Then you can let that go. Does that make sense? What yes. we're doing there? Yeah. So we want to make sure that the references have changed enough for you to not be triggered by the world events. Got it. Good. Very you. good. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you for, for bringing this because I know it will help others as well. Good job, you. All right, everyone. So I think that's it for this week. And I will see you all next week. Lots of love to all of you. Bye-bye now.